Rachel Elnott is a British entrepreneur who shot to fame in the UK as a business dragon on the BBC's Dragon's Den show. She's also an award-winning business mentor. Rachel saw the COVID nonsense and all the political manipulation that followed for what it was and is now standing for election in the Derbyshire Dales constituency of England as a member of the Freedom Alliance. We also share the same birthday, which isn't relevant to anyone at home, but it's a fact, so you can have it. Rachel, welcome to the show. So Dragon to Freedom Alliance. How did that happen? Yeah, well, it was actually rooted in outrage at the whole lockdown nonsense and seeing how the government was destroying small businesses. And I just literally one day was so angry. I just went out and did a rant, a video rant. And um, and it was called Rachel Speaks Out and it went viral um, with about 250,000 views across YouTube and Facebook before it was deleted from both platforms. Oh, okay. And I thought that's really strange. So that it really inspired me to start looking deeply into the whole Great Reset program. And I looked at it from a corporate uh, point of view. And I, I realized very quickly that it was actually a global corporate hostile takeover bid that we were seeing. None of this was happening by accident at all. Absolutely not. So that's what uh, started the whole journey. And I've just kind of rolled with it and said yes and shown up ever since. So with the the Freedom Alliance, you're standing um, as an MP, is that right, for for the Derbyshire Dales constituency? Yeah, well, Freedom Alliance put out a clarion call and said they basically wanted people to stand as MPs. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Now, I don't think under the current system that any small party has any chance of being elected. But I think what we can do is pattern interrupt. And it's another way to speak out and have a platform to speak out and pattern interrupt the bullshit, which is playing out from the mainstream Labour Tory, which are both obviously wings of the same World Economic Forum bird. Of course. In terms of those small parties, I've thought this at some of the other elections and the same with the London mayor elections where you had... You know, the Heritage Party had the Reform mm. Party, and they were kind of pretty much like 95% on the same page, certainly in terms of lockdowns mm. and, and the jab rollout and all that sort of nonsense. And I kind of looked at them standing against each other thinking, I know, you're just splitting the vote. Exactly. And that's the thing about Freedom Alliance is that it is an alliance. So what they're trying to do is everyone that's speaking out against the mainstream, they're trying to create an alliance. That's great. So that we won't be standing against and splitting the vote Um, But I think the key thing, more than anything, is to get the word out about freedom, about truth, about uh, helping the mainstream man in the street to pattern interrupt the mainstream media and to get the message across about what's truly going on. Of course, because if you want to say, you know, make a point like you did with with, with the rant that you did, Mm. then you can just delete that. But actually, if you're being interviewed by the local media in terms of standing um, for that constituency, they've They've got to report it, otherwise it will be obvious to the people that they're censoring it. Well, unfortunately, as we know, all of the mainstream media and all of the regionals, they are ultimately owned by World Economic Forum strategic partners, either wholly or partly funded by them. And so the chances of actually getting the truth, the message out, without this distortion that it's some conspiracy theory or some tin, you know... um, yeah, tin for hat, hat wearing job, yeah. person, you know, that's what we're up against. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I must admit, when anything was happening during COVID, and even now, to be fair, when it comes to Ukraine or, or anything else that they're pushing, climate change, I would search, first of all, I'd search their name. So if a professor, you know, this is so-and-so and they're saying this, I'll go, mm. all right, well, let's, let's have a look at them, search the name, put Bill Gates after it, 99% of the time, there's a connection. Yeah. And if there wasn't a connection with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, I'd put WEF every single time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's insane. I did the same thing through because obviously I've, I've got a business background is looking into like fact checkers, you know, who owns this, who funds this and actually doing a little bit of an audit. And every time you get to find that strategic partners, Facebook, Google, in some way, strategic partners of the World Economic Forum, it all leads back to this unelected body that literally is trying to take over the world. Yeah. And it, the biggest one for me in that in terms of a local level, in terms of England, is YouGov. So they put okay. YouGov polls out, this independent polling company. People go, oh, you know, that's not government, it's YouGov, it's an independent poll. They, they get to the real truth. And you're mm. like, it was created by the vaccine minister. 
Yes. It's insane, really. And people didn't even And they poll a thousand people. No, they crazy. pick. But yeah, they pick. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So you, you've also got um, a, a conscious community in Derbyshire, and this ties perfectly into the media. I, I was looking into that, and I, what I came up with was um, a Derbyshire Evening Telegraph, or Derby, Derby Telegraph, whatever it's called now, piece on it, where what you've got there is, is a community where you've got some land, you're growing food. That makes total sense. We're, sp- we're in a cost of living crisis. We're supposed to be facing food shortages. Great idea. Grow food. And you had to explain to them how it wasn't an end of the world cult. Right? Yeah. I found it extraordinary. Yeah. It, it is crazy. And I just know that there's a lot of people who, rather than trying to fight the old system, are wanting to co-create a different way of being, are wanting to unplug and club coming together and acquiring land and trying to kind of unplug from the system. But unfortunately, it's easier said than done because it doesn't, to me, it seems, it doesn't matter what you do or where you go, you're still up against the authorities and the system in some shape or form. Yeah. So I think standing in our truth and um, speaking out is, is what's left for us. You know, we just have to be truth speakers and try to pattern interrupt the program which is running. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I said this on last week's show, actually, people, the truth resonates differently. Mm. Like, you know the truth when you hear it, and you know a lie when you hear one as well. Yes. You don't even need necessary to, to kind of know all the facts and fit. You just know. Yeah, yeah. That they're full of nonsense. That exactly. One. So truth has a resonance. And the, the resonance of truth collapses evil, basically. So speaking our truth and... Constant, um, um, Matthias Desmond talks about this with mass formation psychosis. It only takes one or two people to speak out. That truth and the resonance of truth has a massive impact and it does, yeah. very important. Yeah, because I think most people look at everything, including you know the current situation, the just stop oil protesters that are you know basically being able to get away with whatever and get into places and trash pieces of art and that sort. They're looking at it thinking this doesn't make sense. Mm. But they don't really know. So then when they hear the, the truth and it resonates, they're already open to it because they already kind of know they're being lied to anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like music where you know something like an instrument slightly off key. Yeah. So if you look at some of the Boris Johnson talks in the lo- lockdown, there was, there, there was something that was very off key, like he was playing a bum note, if yeah. you put it into music terms. And you could tell that he was lying and he was just delivering a script because truth has a resonance. And when you start tuning into that, it becomes very easy. And also with fake news content yeah. to actually look at something, go, there's something a little bit off about this. You can yeah. detect it. Well, you could look at Boris and on those those um, those 5 p.m. briefings and go, he doesn't even believe what he says. Yes, you could tell, exactly. You? Yeah. Exactly. But but as a, as a businesswoman, a very successful uh, businesswoman, you were the creator of, of Red Letter Days. Um, when you look, because most people, myself included, will look at some of the figures being banded around, like we've given another 50 million to Ukraine, we've given this much to uh, PPE, this much mm. to whatever. It's almost monopoly money to mm. most people. That kind of, I don't even know how many zeros that is. Yeah. But for someone that knows about a lot of money, you had very successful businesses and big clients and would have dealt with that money. Do you have a, I would imagine, then you have a better understanding of just how much money we're talking and just what you could do with that money for good <laughs> if you weren't basically just throwing it out the Yeah. Wall. Well, the shocking figure for me was looking, because I, because of the whole pol- political thing, I was looking at the whole Chancellor of Exchequer um, budget speech last week. And we spent something like $400 billion at least on the whole COVID nonsense. I mean, that is just like a shocking amount of money. And then of course, it's like, oh, austerity and Ukraine, and we've all got to to pull our horns in and pay for this. And it's hugely manipulated. And I do feel that we are headed towards some kind of economic collapse where they will literally pull the plug to collapse all of this debt that's been created and use it to to push through the central bank digital currencies and things like universal basic income, which will be the route to controlling everyone through a central digital currency. And I think we have to be very, very careful of what's ahead. This digital everything, it is a trap that we are sleepwalking into. 100%, Mm. yeah. And you can see that they're crushing people to a point, literally, of starvation where they, you know, they can then hand them a carrot, but actually that carrot is completely poisoned. 
Yeah. And I can understand why people would want to take that carrot of universal based income, but it comes with it will come with caveats. Absolutely. And, you know. So this is why with the conscious community idea of people wanting to actually take money out of the bank and put it into land and grow vegetables and well resourced land is that your base survival needs are covered off. And on yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if your base needs are covered off and sorted, you're you're strong and you're powerful. And that's why they want to go for things like food, survival, energy, because they know if they can get to that base survival needs level, it weakens people massively. Absolutely. Because I think, if I'm honest, they're frightened of us. They're frightened of the yeah. people, of the masses. Absolutely. Because yeah. you just look at the Canadian truckers, that uprising, and then boom, suddenly Ukraine happened. Yeah, because they just needed to take the heat out of it. The people were too powerful. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And good yeah. luck. Le- when are the elections? When is, when is that? Only well, who when knows it, when the next oh, general they election call it, is or whenever is, there's yeah. a by-election. So, um, oh, well, fingers crossed for a by-election. Then. Yeah. Magic. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Okay.